i7-4770. This CPU came out in 2013 and it's more than 10 years old. At the time of release, this was one of the best CPUs that you could get. It could basically run any game at any settings without a problem. 4 cores and 8 threads was a luxurious experience back then. Today, not as much. Although if you have something like an i3-12100 or even a 14100F, you're gonna have an amazing experience. But I wanna figure out how this i7-4770 holds up in 2024 and if it can run today's popular games at 60 plus FPS at 1080p resolution. For the benchmarks, I'll be using an RTX 4060 Ti to make sure that we don't get bottlenecked by the GPU. Let's begin with GTA 5. This game came out in 2013, like our CPU here, and as expected, this i7 handles it without a problem. After driving around for about 10 minutes, we achieved 118 FPS on average. The settings were set to high and the crowd density was maxed out. Obviously, in an old game like this, we're not gonna see any starters, but let's use this as a starting point because it's only gonna be more demanding games from here on out. Counter-Strike 2 We're running this game on medium settings at 1080p resolution. Now this game is not that demanding per se, but it still struggles to utilize the full power of older processors. Hence why i3-14100F or Ryzen 5 7500F are performing so well here. Either way, we averaged a stable 111 FPS in this game. The gameplay was smooth and I had no complaints whatsoever. Doom Eternal This is probably one of the best utilized games out there. I played it on ultra settings at 1080p resolution and I gotta say, it was a really enjoyable experience. The FPS never dropped below 100 and sometimes it even went into low 200s. On average, we got around 177 FPS. Forza Horizon 5 Here the graphics are set to high and ray tracing is disabled. After a full run of the building benchmark, we achieved 104 FPS on average. So far, this CPU has handled every single game that we have thrown at it without a problem. And I know that we're not running these games on the highest possible settings, but let's be honest here, if you're still gaming on this CPU, the chances are that you don't have an RTX 4060 Ti sitting in your PC. The settings that we're testing these games on are just about what you would normally be using if you had a suitable graphics card for this CPU. Halo Infinite now even though this game isn't that demanding on this CPU, I was still impressed by the amount of FPS that we were getting. On medium settings at 1080p resolution, the FPS stayed well over 100, which is quite impressive for a CPU this old. After running around for 10 or so minutes and fighting with the enemies, we achieved 110 FPS on average. I did see a few micro starters here and there, but they were pretty much unnoticeable throughout the game. Red Dead Redemption 2. Here I chose the number 10 preset or the balance settings at 1080p resolution. After a full run of this built-in benchmark, we averaged a solid 80 FPS. In crowded areas the FPS dropped to mid 50s, but most of the times it stayed above 70. Horizon Zero Dawn. I remember playing this game on my old PC, which was a lot of fun by the way. I even fully finished it and got all of the achievements on Steam, so I thought it would be a good idea to go back and see how this CPU would handle it in 2024. And I gotta say, I was quite impressed by the performance. I expected to see a lot of micro starters, but to my surprise, the FPS kept well over 60 at all times and it was a smooth experience all around. After fighting the monsters and running around for 10 or so minutes, we averaged 81 FPS on high settings. Sons of the Forest This game is known for having micro starters, especially on older hardware, but to my surprise, this i7 ran the game without a problem. Besides one or two micro starters, it was a smooth experience all around. On medium settings at 1080p resolution, we averaged around 70 FPS. Cyberpunk will be our last game for today's benchmarks. 
I chose medium settings here as well, mainly because of how demanding Cyberpunk is on the CPU, especially with the amount of cars and crowd that it has to load. Inside the buildings and closed areas, the CPU had no problem achieving 80-ish FPS. Sometimes it even went into low hundreds, but outside it stayed between 50 to 80 FPS. On average, I would say that we got around 70-ish FPS. The game itself was quite playable, and the few stars that I saw were not too distracting. Overall, I gotta say that I'm really impressed with the results that this CPU has shown today. It handled all of these games way better than I thought it would. But in case you're curious about this CPU's performance in some other games, I suggest looking up benchmarks for those games on YouTube. Speaking of which, some of you might already know, but I also have a second channel where I upload the benchmarks of various games and hardware. So if that's something that interests you, you can find the link to that channel in the pinned comment below. And on that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.